Hi guys, welcome to another video. This isn't the video I initially planned to release today, but it's the one you're getting because I decided to change something in the other video, which is going to make it take longer to finish. So with that change, I decided to pivot and do a short video on Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit. This is a game that is based off of the first installment of the Fazbear Frights book series, a book which I actually have. It was released for the 10th anniversary of the series, a milestone which is insane and makes me feel really old, so let's not dwell on it and just take a look at the game. The first thing that I need to get out of the way is the art style. I love the retro aesthetic and it just generally looks amazing. For a pixel art game, the characters are super expressive, the movement is really smooth, and the cutscenes look amazing. Like, look at this, it's so cool. At least the animated cutscenes look good. There are a few items and quote-unquote cutscenes that look like they were ripped out of a different game, which kind of took me out of the experience. It's the same with Security Breach. When you play an entire game with one art style, throwing in a new one for the endings feels weird. It also doesn't help that this drawn art style looks a lot like Celeste. I don't know, Celeste is a very similar case seeing how there are parts of that game that have this drawn art style versus the pixel art gameplay, but it works for Celeste and doesn't work here in my opinion. Other than that though, I think that this game looks amazing and it's definitely the breath of fresh air that everybody says it is. I much prefer this retro game style than the overly cartoonish character sprites in Security Breach and Ruin. However, this breath of fresh air doesn't mean that the game is perfect, and despite what everyone is saying, I think that this game has a few problems. For one, it's too easy, except on Nightmare Mode. Nightmare Mode makes it so that you only have one life. If you die, you have to restart. This is a challenge which I find very annoying because there are achievements that are tied to this mode. I can appreciate the fact that there is a challenge mode, but I think that putting achievements that ask you to get the best ending on Nightmare Mode is a little punishing, especially considering that the other three game modes are pretty easy. Now, that difficulty thing isn't necessarily the biggest problem ever, and I may just be annoyed with it because I find the game to be really boring. It's more of an RPG, which is the reason that everybody calls it a breath of fresh air. It's a form of gameplay that isn't the norm for the series. However, as far as RPGs go, this isn't the best one. The puzzles are relatively simple, the narrative is quite frankly rushed, and the gameplay is really repetitive. I know it's ironic to complain about this series having repetitive gameplay, but a good gameplay loop is essential to a good game. In the original series, it's a gameplay loop that gets you into a pattern. All the while, the nights get harder and harder, which makes things more hectic. The looping gameplay is made fun because it gets harder to maintain the pattern. That's why the games I have the most fun with are FNAF 2 and Ultimate Custom Night. I like the challenge of having a bunch of threats coming at me and having to deal with them as they come. Into the Pit tries to do that, but it doesn't work. Instead, it makes every night feel like a carbon copy of the last. The first night has you dealing specifically with the yellow rabbit, and every subsequent night introduces a new animatronic with different mechanics. Night 2 has Chica, giving you a puzzle where you need to get a slice of pizza to lure her away from the kitchen. However, following this puzzle, Chica becomes an alarm. If she sees you move, she will be incredibly loud and lure the rabbit to your location. Night 3 introduces Bonnie via a puzzle where you need to fix his guitar and then use it to lure him away from the arcade. Once you do that, he'll hide under the party tables and grab you if you try to hide there. Admittedly, I like this mechanic. It makes it so you can't rely on certain hiding spots, which is a nice challenge. Night 4 brings Freddy, who's introduced via a puzzle where you have to use a firecracker to lure him away from the security office. Do you see what I mean by it being repetitive? Every night is a repeat of the last. It follows the same structure every time. Oswald goes back to find his dad, gets distracted by the screams of a kid who he then has to save. In the process, he goes on some side plot to distract a new animatronic, finds the kid, then gets immediately attacked by the yellow rabbit. Every night. It makes the game feel so tedious to get through. And it doesn't help that when you're being chased, there are these little mini-games you can get into where the yellow rabbit knows you're hiding. 
It pulls you from the usual third person perspective into a first person look where you have to either stay silent, stay out of sight, or stop something from reaching the bottom of the screen. Unfortunately, no matter which difficulty you're on, this is always an easy segment. The ones where you have to stop things from hitting the bottom are always just four buttons. The ones where you have to be quiet or hidden are just one. It's never anything that's actually challenging, and that adds to the fact that this game feels boring. And on top of that, there was this one game-breaking glitch which really soured my feelings towards the game. On night 5, you have to get a keycard and go to the party room to rescue the last kid and find your father. However, sometimes when going into the party room, the last kid won't spawn, and you get softlocked. Reloading a save didn't work, resetting the game didn't work, the run was just dead. So, in order to fix this, you had to restart the entire game. I know that Security Breach came out broken, but at the very least, it didn't break so bad that you couldn't go back to a save and continue the story. And speaking of saves, the game relies solely on an autosave system that is shit. It picks and chooses specific spots to save at, and there's no manual save to make it so you can pick up where you left off. If you die, it can sometimes send you back a decent amount and make you redo a bunch of challenges. I, I can't play this game without feeling bored or annoyed by the way it works. The story is also just half-baked to me. Every night ends with Oswald getting chased out of the pizzeria by the Yellow Rabbit. However, getting chased is something that happens to Oswald as a regular part of the gameplay. It's just a mechanic. So I don't understand why he chooses to leave instead of just hiding and continuing his search. The everyday life aspect of the story is just a chore to get through, and it serves like no purpose. This girl named Gabriella just gives Oz a notebook that pertains to the animatronics, which serves as the basis for dealing with them during gameplay. It's really convenient. Going to school does nothing for the story. Oswald's fear of the animatronics feels rushed, and it's only shown by flashing between real people and animatronic hallucinations. Apparently, the Yellow Rabbit is supposed to be a personification of the monster that the missing children see him as. A personification of the monster they all saw before they died. This is a really cool concept, but they don't do anything with it, or even try to explain it in the story. Now, there's a lot of lore and references to the other stories from the books, like Fetch and To Be Beautiful and The Stitch Wraith, apparently, as well as Afton Easter eggs, like the purple guy appearing in this one minigame, and a phone number where you can hear the audio of Afton getting springlocked. These go back to the roots of the series, with 8-bit minigames that pose a lot more questions than answers. I like these easter eggs, and I like the minigames and phone numbers, but overall, I feel like the game is just lackluster. That doesn't mean that it's a bad game, I just don't think that it's the peak of the series like everybody has been saying. But that's just me. Let me hear your opinions in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye